Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where we talk alignment, intuition, and our internal guidance system. We cover woo-woo topics in an approachable and practical way. I'm your host, Dana Evans of Alignful.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. I am your host, Dana Evans, and today we are at episode 74, and we're getting into a fun interview with a friend and a client, Katie Huey, and it is an interview about her inner voice session. And we're doing something really fun where this week I'm going to share with you her interview and her experience before, during, and after the inner voice session. And then next week, everyone, I'm doing something I have never done before. We are going to play clips of her actual inner voice session so you can hear and experience what an inner voice session actually is like. I know I talk about this all the time. This is my work. It's my passion. It's, I think, the most effective and coolest form of coaching that there is. It's the most direct way to access your higher self and actually speak as your higher self and become that version of you for a period of time. But I know this is still kind of confusing, this work. What is my inner voice? What does it sound like? What is the session like? And so instead of trying to explain it to you from a mental perspective, I am going to take you with me into an inner voice session so you can experience it as well. Katie is kind enough to have given me her blessing to actually share chunks of her session And I am just unbelievably excited. And this will become more normal on the podcast to share clips of inner voice sessions, whether it's from clients who are okay with it or from my own sessions. I have quite a few of my own sessions that I am excited to share with you as well. And we won't, of course, play the entire session because often they're 90 minutes or more, but I want you to get a taste of what it is like. So that's coming next week, but I wanted to preempt that with an interview with Katie because she's so eloquent. I just adore her. And since this interview happened, and this is, we did this interview last year, I believe shortly after she made a big life move, a couple big life moves. And since then, she's really settled into her own flow in her new home with her new family. And it's really beautiful. So that's like Katie's update. She's doing great. The baby's doing great. You'll get a taste of that as well. And I'm so grateful for her and her journey and her willingness to share that with you on this podcast. So there's that. And then of course, I want to let you know, so that's what's coming on this episode, and I want to let you know about the Insight Coaching Experience. Oh my God. I have never, I'm going to keep talking about this because it is my baby. I am obsessed. I am excited. I am just lit up with this offer, and in a way that this is just a new way of me being lit up. I'm I'm usually lit up about the things that I offer, but I think as I've gone through like finishing the sloth experiment and gone through my own clearing and my own experiences, I've up leveled in so many ways and my own insights have expanded. And so with that comes a new level of inspiration, right? And influence, this inner influence how it's affecting my outer reality and my life. And oh my God, it's just amazing. It's just this coaching program. So it's very personalized. So if you're interested and if your inner voice is like sparking something in you, like if you're getting chills or like a little in the belly or in your heart, that's a sign that your inner voice is saying, please, let's find out more. We want this. So you can email me at Dana. D-A-N-A at alignful.com, A-L-I-G-N-F-U-L.com. You can email me. You can send me a DM on Instagram, text me, whatever. 
And let me know because this is a personalized three-month experience. It's a deep dive into self, a space to decondition, to release old programming, to free trapped emotions, and tap into the wisdom of your inner voice. This is about leaning into what is right for you, right? It's about being and releasing while building trust in yourself. How amazing would it feel to clear blocks that you didn't even know were preventing you from taking steps forward in your life? I call them unconscious blocks, right? Because we don't know necessarily what's going on. And together in this program, right, it's a combination of inner voice coaching and mind-based coaching, my two areas of expertise. But together, we'll work with your conscious mind, right, to take action steps, right, in the 3D world. We'll work to reprogram your subconscious mind so that it starts working for you instead of against you. And we'll tap into your emotional and energetic fields to release those unconscious blocks and obstacles. And when we clear the blocks that stand in the way of you connecting to yourself, right? The things that keep you from taking actions that you want, right? You're like, I want this, but why can't I do this? That is going to be so effective, right? That's going to shift everything in you. And it's just something you couldn't have done without knowing, right? We don't know what we don't know. And this, this program that this experience, as I prefer to call it, it's by far the most effective and rewarding process that I have found to connect with your inner voice so that you can feel safe to follow your guidance, right? So you can trust the nudges, like the one you may be feeling right now, as I talk about this experience and make confident and effortless decisions in life and business, right? Oh, so by the end of the three months, this custom program of us working together, you'll be able to break through like these harsh judgments, like that constant mind chatter, right? All the traps and limited beliefs that your mind's created for you. You'll learn to allow yourself to expand beyond what you thought was possible in your life and your business and really tapping into more joy, peace, and ease in your daily life. And you'll become your greatest source of insight and inspiration. Oh, Oh my God. I'm so excited. If this sparks something, let me know. We work together through one-to-one sessions. So it's set up as three weeks on, one week of integration. And it's a combination of inner voice coaching, mind-based coaching, energetic clearing and release and just kind of ongoing communication. So that's the transformation. That's the insight coaching experience. It is just it's the most profound and effective coaching I've ever seen. Like to combine these two, it's taking, you know, mind-based coaching is great at breaking beliefs and getting us to take action, but it's not always our deepest alignment, right? Toward what is truly right for us. It's often based on external expectations, those decisions we're making. And in our voice coaching, those sessions, they're so powerful and enlightening, but often After the session, no matter how much you gain from it, the mind gets back and keeps you from taking action on what you heard through your session. So then we'll take what we learn from the inner voice, what it's guiding us toward, and we'll use the mind-based coaching to get you to take action and make sustainable shifts so that you can actually use what the inner voice guides you toward and take you forward. So anyway, that's that. So again, email me or shoot me a DM on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans or email me at Dana at alignful.com. And just let me know. We can jump on a 30 minute call and just talk. I want to know what you're looking for, what you need, what sparked you to actually set up that call with me and create this beautiful custom experience for you designed by your inner voice right? And propelled forward by your mind. And so exciting. So without further ado, this week's episode, this replay of my interview with Katie Huey, she talks about all the guidance she received from her inner voice and how she decided to take action upon it and all that unfolded in her life by listening to the nudges and following and trusting them in the massive transformation she received. Hello. 
Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. This week, as I mentioned on the intro, we have the most lovely, special, amazing guest, my friend and fellow coach. Her name is Katie Huey, and she is here to one wow you guys with her prose because I think she speaks very oh eloquently it always feels like she's telling this like lovely story so one you just get to listen to her but two she's going to share a little bit about her experience with one she's in the tuning in membership and she's she's been a loyal member and has had some pretty awesome experiences She's also done a deep inner voice session with me. And she's one of the people who I'm telling you guys, Katie, when she kind of latches onto something, she like gets into it. So she's been really um, important with me figuring out how we're really talking about this inner voice work and how, you know, we explain it to other people and how we work it into our lives because she's very good at analyzing. She's an INTJ and very different way of thinking than I am. Yet we're both Enneagram sevens. I'll just tell you that. So you're going to get the peppy, really fun conversation from us, but she's here to really offer you all a different perspective of how she, as a very analytical INTJ thinker questioner, has been able to not just like work her inner voice into her life, but really to use it to guide her through some pretty big decisions in life. And we will talk about those as well. So Katie, welcome to the show. I am so happy to have you. Thank you, Dana. I'm so happy to be here. No pressure. (laughs) No pressure at all. I mean, that was just a casual intro. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so honored. (laughs) So let me, I'm just, we'll just kick it off. Um, Will you tell us just a little bit about like you and your kind of way of thinking and how you came to this inner voice intuition type work and like where you were beforehand and what, what sparked curiosity for you around this stuff? Oh yeah. So I think it, it, it's good to start with the fact that like I'm an anthropology degree. So I've always been very um, methodical in the way that I approach basically anything. I have like a scientific process to my life. Um, I definitely try to think about things in a holistic way and also what makes the most sense. And throughout the years, it actually made me a little jaded, a little bit of a, we're all just a bunch of monkeys on a rock. It's all coincidence kind of person. And it was unfulfilling for one. And there are a lot of big life decisions that I needed to make and was making and didn't realize all of the factors at play. I thought it was just me putting things on a spreadsheet and making the most logical decision. And things just always happen to work out for the best. And of course, that was because I did the data analysis, right? And I moved out to Colorado <laughs> with my husband. And when it was one of the most transformative experiences of my life because I moved to one of the the crunchiest, most woo-woo communities I've ever experienced. And at first I was like, whoa, guys, like I don't fit in here. And the more that I was able to release and hear other people's stories and almost like immerse myself in the culture, if you will, the more I was intrigued by it, the more that I was open to it and the more I wanted to experiment in it. And it really wasn't until I became a coach with James Wedmore and I met Dana Evans and went on my first date with you, Dana. We had (laughs) the best dates. We've gone on so many dates. We had this great ritual um, on Pearl Street. And it's all the conversations I would have with Dana and how drawn I was to that calm confidence of just like owning who she was, saying yes to plans she truly wanted you truly wanted and um, say no to the things that you didn't and kind of reconciling the fact that I was such a people pleaser and being like, whoa, I didn't realize I was living my life based on expectations of others. You know, um, if I, I'm the anthropologist, I'm a very clinical person. If I explored this side of myself, then what would people think? And it wasn't until I met you, Dana, that I 
threw that out the window and finally explored another side of myself that had been lurking there all along. And I didn't realize was there until I had joined the membership and was awakened to these parts of myself that had always been poking at me, had always been kind of waving, saying, please acknowledge me. Um, it wasn't until, until this that I finally did. And it finally opened up a new era of decision making for me that was so out of my normal past character, but also one of the most expansive, transformative and fulfilling ways that I could go through my life. And I'll just say that was beautiful. You being also there to witness that transformation with you was so cool because, you know, I met you once you'd already been living in Boulder for a while. And so you had already gone through part of the transformation. But as we got to know each other and I got to know more about, you know, the I talk on this podcast a lot about like versions of yourself. So I got to know about a previous version of Katie by from your stories. I'm like, what? You were like that? But then even in the short period of time that we both lived in Colorado and got to spend time together each week, it was like, oh my gosh, your transformation and your shift from, you know, outside in to inside out was really huge. And you it's almost like you took this information and you're like, yes, this is for me. And you just ran with it. It was like no looking back. <laughs> it really wasn't. You just kind of brought up something for me, the outside in to inside out. I think that that is seriously the most powerful part of this is what I was doing before was collecting all this outside information, putting it into a spreadsheet, like not even kidding. My husband and I had a spreadsheet of where we were going to move for him for law school. And I was taking all this outside stimulus to make decisions that were going to internally affect me for a very long time. And yeah, you were there for that transformation of that inside out where it was me collecting the stimulus that I was feeling inside and making an outward decision that didn't really make a lot of sense to a lot of people all the time, but eventually made more sense and gave me more peace because my transition to Colorado was not easy. And it was because I made it based on outside stimulus versus what I truly felt was good. Oh my gosh. And that man, you just hit on such a big point because that is what we do. We collect, even unconsciously, even the non-anthropologists of us, which are maybe most of us. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we were trained early on to collect data and then fit the data and fit it to our life. So it's like, well, this is what it means to be healthy. This is what it means to be fit. This is what it means to be a good person. This is what it means to be a good friend, a good partner. And we look at we look at all of that outside information and then we filter it through our mind. And then we're like, okay, so that means this is how I need to act. These are the decisions I need to make. This is how I should feel. This is what my life should look like. And that's how people end up looking at their life and be like, how did I get here? Versus looking at their life and saying, I created this. And the only way you can truly create it is if you're operating from that inside of, what is my body telling me? What is it communicating with me? Even if I don't understand the why or the how, what is showing up and can I trust myself enough to follow that? Because then I'm following the only true north that there really is, which is my internal guidance system. And then those decisions really start to like little breadcrumbs, right? Be put together and you look back and you're like, wow, how cool was it that I trusted this nudge and this nudge and I followed this weird decision that no one thought made any sense. And I realized that it's because I was following it for myself, not to prove anything or show others anything, right? Or to fit into a box that other people want me to fit into that I was able to create the life that I wanted and a life that I'm excited about and proud of, not just, you know, getting by checking the boxes. Oh, yes, that gives me absolute chills because it's it's true. We spend so much of our lives, you know, seeking advice and borrowing ideas and experiences from others to therefore filter through our brain and create our own experiences when we kind of need to flip it on its head literally and 
go from the inside, filter through our brains to craft our reality. It's all relative. and it's mm, all That just gave me pressure. chills. <laughs> Katie is the messaging queen, guys. The number of times you have no idea. You don't have any idea. I don't have any idea. The number of times I've gone to Katie be like, well, let's present it this way. And she's like, I hear what you're saying. And here's what I'm actually getting that I think you actually want to say. And I'm like, yeah, that. <laughs> I love it. We have hours of voice messages between each other about messaging. We do, yeah, because we record our conversations because there's so much good stuff that comes out of them. Find yourself a friend that will voice memo record your conversations because your conversations are so powerful and so insightful that you don't want to forget anything that you say. And it's so great because it's also so empowered by both of our inner voices because both of us have mastered this like we just say what we want unapologetically unfiltered and then both of us come back like oh my gosh Dana's inner voice that was one of the most amazing insights I've ever experienced it's just it's a beautiful thing get yourself a friend who is also in on this journey exactly yes and then you can ride the wave together and it's so much more fun guys it's so much more fun to not be the black sheep and (laughs) to get in on this stuff because Katie So we'll go into this a little bit, talking about like the breadcrumbs, how it's leading you. You've had some pretty crazy transformations in literally the last like just this year, the last six months. And that's also when you were really getting into this inner voice work and following and trusting your inner guidance. So let's talk a little bit about first what it means for you to actually trust that. And then we can kind of talk about how trusting that has kind of led you to where you are. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, So what it means for me to trust that it meant for me to let go of what I had previously considered reality. This idea of everything being a coincidence of just binary choices and learning to learning to trust. I didn't realize how much I didn't trust myself, although there was a part of myself that was guiding me all along. Like how offensive am I to myself that I like was listening to something I didn't realize I was listening to and then chalking it all up to like, oh, thank you, Zach, for that amazing insight. Now I can make this decision based off of what you said without realizing that there was a part of me that led me to that conversation in the first place and opened me to receiving the information and processing it in my own way. Um, So I just needed to suspend my disbelief and open myself to a new way of being. And when I truly did that, it was one of the most peaceful transitions of my life, one of the most peaceful expansions. I mean, peaceful in that like it was massively uncomfortable at first because it was a new way of being, but the result was so peaceful. Yeah, it <laughs> and that's a really good explanation. In fact, a lot of people who I've done inner voice sessions with have talked about this where it it was challenging in a different way not the way that our minds are used to challenges because we're used to like physical work and effort to get what we want and to figure things right it's like i have to figure it out i have to think about it when when someone asks you to make a decision you're like let me think about it and then you sit down and you think and you make all of the pros and cons list and you analyze and you figure it out it's a very different experience of really going from that place of like active work to, yeah, it's uncomfortable because we're going against what we've been trained to do since we were young of like, this is how you make decisions. This is how you go about your life. This is how you make transitions. And so it's very uncomfortable and, and sometimes a little awkward, but ultimately it is more, it's more going downstream, right? With the flow of life versus fighting against it. Oh, for sure. And we kind of touched on this in a conversation we had last week where our entire educational career is based on like the next step. And the next step is kind of laid out for us. And we're taught to think in a very specific way. And me specifically in like a social science career, it was very like, okay, collect collect the data, process and make a decision. And then when I graduated, 
There was no obvious next step. And there really wasn't much for me to collect to make a sound, what I considered at the time, next decision. I had not developed a skill to move forward in a way that was right for me or that was in touch with my intuition. And I didn't even know how to like spell intuition at that point in my life. Um, I was just completely devoid of this other way of being and this other way of living my life and this other way of moving through the progression of my life. Cause it was like grades one through 12. And then if you were going on to higher education, here's what that looked like. And when I graduated, there was no map and no one ever told me that I could write my own. I could trust my own, that there was a map in me and I had no way of accessing it until I moved to Colorado and met all my crunchy friends and eventually crossed paths with Dana Evans. And now here I am. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. You gave me chills again. Yeah. Making your own map because gosh, you totally nailed that. And when you mentioned that to me the other day, it's like, if we look at our lives, they are so basically scheduled and set out for us until we're, you know, 22. And then it's like, at that point, though, you've usually gotten the job that you're supposed to get that has to do with a degree that you were supposed to get that has to do with the college that your parents wanted you to go to (laughs) because society says you're better if you go to college. And it's this crazy thing where all of a sudden you're living on your own, you're doing this life and you're checking all the boxes. And if you have the luxury to actually pause and reflect, you might be like, hold on is this what I really want? Like, who am I living for? And what does this mean? And what do I want to create going forward? Or do I just want to keep following the well-worn path that everyone else does because it's what everyone else does because no one bothers to really consider and ask, what do I want? Because we think that's not okay because that's selfish, right? So there's this whole storyline that that unfolds and it leads to, a lot of people, right? And this is really what I think about because I went through it as well as we hit that kind of quarter life crisis between 25 and like 32 of, holy crap, what am I doing with my life? And I feel like it's coming a little sooner now for kids these days. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like you said, is you didn't realize that you could actually trust on yourself because that's not what you were taught. You were taught to follow a path. And then when the path is kind of removed, the clear one at least, it's like, well, crap, what do I do? And that's where you really started to question and, you know, ask yourself these hard questions, which is, that's the most important thing, right? That you were willing to ask the questions. Yeah, absolutely. And, and those questions bring up some pretty scary, like responses from yourself, because then you're like, well, that's different than what everybody else is doing. And if that's different, what are people going to think? And what will my family think? And what will I tell people? Will people take me seriously? And it just brings up this whole, like you're describing, quarter life crisis. Even though on some level, my inner voice that I didn't know existed at the time was telling me, screaming to me, you are meant for more. You are meant for something different than this. And that's okay. In fact, that's beautiful. But I was so wrapped up in this just like pedantic march towards the next grade level that when there were no more grades to accomplish and no more years of schooling to accomplish and move on to, I just had absolutely no idea what to do. Yeah. And then that's, you know, the free fall. And then it's like, well, Katie, you could always get a master's. Or do you have your master's? I don't remember. I don't have my (laughs) master's because I, I had hit this point in my life where I was just like... I knew I was supposed to do something different. I always kind of marched to the beat of my own drum, a very independent person. And I really value my freedom. And the thought of doing anything else that kind of took away that time freedom was just like, no, I I can't do it. There was, there was, I tried to think about getting my master's and just even the thought of studying for the GRE was just like, nope, this does not feel good. I don't want to do this. And no matter how hard I like pushed myself to like get materials or look into study courses. I could never commit. And I didn't really know why. I just couldn't. And then because of this narrative of, you know, going to school and therefore you're better and you're worth more in society, I would feel immense guilt. Yeah. That I was yeah. 
forward in some way, but really I was, it was just in my way. Right. Cause moving forward, even that was going through a filter of what it should look like, because yeah. what happens to a lot of these people who, you know, a lot of people want to pursue education for their own reasons, but a lot of people do. It's like, well, I don't know what's next. I want something more for myself. And if I want more for myself, that means I have to go back to school. And so I'm going to go back to school, go back to learning from other minds that only are part of the 5% and go back to the well-known path because that's what feels the safest, right? And that's what I've been told to do. Yeah, that's exactly it because that was back to a safety net. Yeah. Exactly. Instead of embracing and stepping into that calling, right? There is the beauty is like I talk about this all the time, but the beauty is my friends that even if you're not necessarily tapped into your inner voice, like even if you're not like my inner voice type is the gut, my inner voice type is ether, whatever your inner voice type is, even if you're not present to that yet, but if you're going through my four day challenge right now, You will be present to it because we're talking about that right now, but you are still being guided. And the beauty of this is even the person who's the most disconnected and not paying attention is still being guided. And Katie, even though you weren't actively aware that at that time that you were being guided, guess what? Something was keeping you from, something was telling you both that you were meant for more and keeping you from getting quote more from the traditional sense of like doing your masters. And so that's the beauty of listening is even if you're not necessarily paying attention to the inner voice, if you can start to just pay attention to the signs from your body, something's coming up. Like you were resisting that path and there was a reason. 100%. And I think back on these experiences in my life And I've always been described as someone who is decisive, who knows what she wants, assertive, you know, whatever you want to assign to me, who like, I, I know what I want and I make decisions and I make them hard. (laughs) I think back to these decisions in my life, like even down to my wedding dress and how I didn't realize that my decision-making process was so rooted in my inner voice type. I just had nothing to connect it. I didn't even have the language to connect it, the the awareness to know that that's what was going on. And then once I built that awareness, it was like the floodgates opened and it just expanded and evolved into this amazing part of my life, this amazing aspect of my life and how I moved through life and experienced life. And I didn't even know it was happening. Yeah. Oh, and that's just, here's the deal. Your inner voice all of our inner voices are dying to have the microphone and they're so patient and they sit back and they're like, they hear the mind, they roll their eyes. They're like, Oh, there goes the mind again. Chatter, 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 worry, 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 do, do, do work, 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 proof, proof, (laughs) proof. And the inner voice is just waiting for the invitation and like a projector from human design. That's me guys. I'm always waiting for the invitation (laughs) from someone to invite me (laughs) to share my guidance with them because I'm not meant to just jump in and, you know, lecture people. So the inner voice is very similar. And when you say, okay, let's do this. Like this is where Elizabeth Gilbert explains in Eat, Pray, Love, where she's like on the floor of her bathroom and she hears that message, right? An inner voice message really. And that she decided in that moment, nothing else was working and I'm going to pay attention. And when you make that decision, when you're like, okay, fine, I'm listening. I am here. I am listening. That is one of the mantras in the membership, right? We have a mantra every month because that invitation to the inner voice can really make a massive shift like you just described, Katie. Yeah, that's where I started. You know, I remember saying, I'm here, I am listening and then having follow-up conversations with you. And I was like, what am I listening for? And we had like this conversation about it and you were like, Katie, you know, this is your type. And it blew my world wide open. You know, like I didn't even realize, like, I was like, I'm here, I'm listening. And I'm like waiting for like the voice of God to say, hello, I'm here. You know, like I just had no idea what I was even listening for. And when you broke it down for me in the membership, it was like, 
it blew my world wide open to this whole new way of being and existing. And then what became possible when I trusted, not only just like trusted the process, but trusted myself. And what's your inner voice type, Katie? I am, I, I, it's the gut, my gut. I'm very, um, I feel it. I brought up my wedding dress um, a couple minutes ago and it's little decisions like that in my life where I try, I have always been someone who I, I know what I want. And when I went to go search for my wedding dress, I picked out the very first dress that I saw and I was like, this fits the vision I had in my mind. Yes, this is the one. And then I went through three days of trying on dresses because I owed it to myself and it was really fun, right? There's nothing better than trying on these gorgeous gowns. And I went with my very first decision. I felt it in my gut the moment that I saw it. And I've just always made decisions that way. Very like, this is what I want. I know it. I feel it. But let me explore all of my options so that I know that like I'm at least making, you know, like I'm being a sound human being who's exploring every option available to me. But really... It was all just unnecessary because I already knew on some level. And it didn't hit me until literally I was on a hike with you, Dana. And telling I was like, yeah, I get this like feeling in my gut. Like I just know. And you're like, Katie, <laughs> that's your inner voice. I was like, oh, wait, what? Like I, I had this like misconception that there was going to literally be a voice for me. And for me, the beginning, it was definitely a feeling. And it was so strong and I had just never connected that that was my inner voice talking to me. Yes. And so the gut, um, the gut type <laughs> uh, is very much, it's like yes or no. And it's in your gut and it's just a very strong grounded feeling of, you know, and it mm-hmm. also can happen really quickly. So that's Katie's yeah. type. Okay. Katie, so, and we can all have all the types of inner voices, just so you know, but we tend to have a primary one when we're just discovering it. So it's physical sensation, gut, heart, ether, and sound. So sound is the one, the voice that you speak of, Katie. So my primary type is physical sensation. So since we're talking wedding dresses, let me tell you how I discovered my wedding dress. Um, first of all, it didn't fit any of the visions that I had for my wedding dress. I had a mind idea of what I wanted my dress and it was like crepe really like it looked like I was going to get married at the four seasons in New York. That's really what my dress was like really smooth, thick fabric, tightly hugging, pure white, um, really clean lines. And so those were the dresses I tried on on my second day. So I only did two days. My second day, I went back to retry on the dress that I thought was that fit the box that I had made for myself. And I was just wandering around looking. And then I was drawn, like energetically drawn toward this one that had long sleeves, which I kind of had wanted, but I didn't know had long sleeves. And it was nothing, Katie, it was nothing (laughs) like any of the dresses. It was all lace from head to toe. It was not like there was no poof. It was, um, but it had like this big, beautiful train and this low cut back and long sleeves and this high chest. And I just saw it and I was like, whoa, something hit me. I just felt like warmth. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to try this on just for fun. (laughs) I put the dress on, I walked out with my mom and I looked in the mirror and I burst into tears. (laughs) And so did my mom. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And so I was like, wow, this is the one. And then I tried the other one on that was like the one that checked the boxes and it was like I didn't feel. And so that's mine. Like it's just this really strong physical sensation. Of course, the dress was out of budget and it didn't make sense. And I was like, this can't be the dress. This wasn't what I imagined. And so just if you guys listen to the two very different descriptions of Katie knew what she imagined, she went for it and she saw it and found it and knew, but then she tried on. I had what I imagined. And then I went back and found something that I was drawn to and then realized that was the one. So you can see that by using your type, you can really feel into your decisions. And both of us, you know, had gorgeous dresses that were amazing. 
I'm obsessed with my dress. I'm like, I'm it's never giving so it away. <laughs> so obsessed. Hearing the description of what you imagined yourself in, I'm like, really? Because I like, I cannot imagine you in any other dress. Like, I saw your beautiful wedding pictures, and just like how it encapsulated your free spirit, and how beautiful it was, and how beautiful you were in it. And I'm just like, wait, I can't imagine you in anything less like free spirited. Yeah, it was and, very like Taylor Swifty oh, the dress. It's so Taylor Swifty, and I'm a Swifty. So and Beyonce from the bottom of my heart, it was very Taylor. It was, Swift. it was guys. It was Taylor Swift plus Beyonce because it was very form fitting and was sheer and had like a mini skirt underneath, which gave me my Beyonce flair. Um, but I totally oh. wore like a crown. <laughs> so, but that <laughs> the point being, now we're like wedding dress. Talk. I don't, I haven't shared that story with anybody. So, thanks for bringing up dresses. That's really fun to hear the difference. Yeah. Um. The the other types are heart, uh, ether, which is like where you get like a download, and then sound where you actually hear words. And, but it's so cool to really experience like how your type informs your own ability to make decisions and to trust yourself. Because like if Katie thinks that in order to connect to her inner voice, she has to hear words and she's saying, I'm here, I'm listening. And she's waiting for her inner voice to say, Katie, we love you. You're perfect. Which it did, (laughs) by the way, when we did the inner voice session. But that's a whole nother thing. They all can speak to you or speak through you. But if she's listening for words and her type is gut, she's not going to connect to it. It's just like the love language. It's like if Katie's love language is acts of service and mine is um, words of affirmation, if every time I see Katie, I like tell her how great she is, I'm sure she'll appreciate it. But you know what she'd really appreciate is for me to say, hey, Katie, I'm going to come pick you up and pick out a hike and take you on a hike. She would probably appreciate that more than me saying, Katie, thanks so much for planning the hike for us. You're awesome. <laughs> And, you know, and like on that same vein too, because I talk about love languages a lot um, with my family members, is that it is also entirely possible that you have more than one and you have no idea. And it's a matter of connecting with the one that is the most natural to open up the possibility of connecting with the others. And in the case of love language, it's, it's like, oh man, quality time and gift giving, right? I identify more with spending quality time with people, but then every now and then I feel called to give a gift and I show love in that way. And I was not open to that unless like I explored my other love languages. Like it's really interesting how the more you get to know yourself and the more you lean into what feels good, the more that opens up for you and the more you can express yourself and the more you can connect with yourself in different ways. Oh my gosh. Uh, So well said. And what she keeps saying is the more you can do it. Well, guess how we do it more. This is the whole reason why I created the tuning in membership versus like a course or a program or even just the one-off inner voice sessions because y'all, to use a Katie in Alabama term, we, y'all, we have been conditioned to not trust that, to, to dismiss the signs that everything is a coincidence and to not trust our own inner guidance. And so it takes time and conditioning to retrain yourself to look inward, right? To shift that perspective of not mind first, but like heart first or gut first or whatever your type is. And it just takes time and practice. And it's so fun to do it through that membership model. Cause then it's like each month you get new exercises to practice it. And so where Whereas you can kind of pick it up maybe relatively quickly to really integrate it into your life the way Katie has done so well. It just takes it takes consistency and the willingness to kind of keep questioning that status quo. Totally. And my husband, Zach, for those who don't know him, um, the other day I was explaining emotions to him and or my emotions around a particular issue to him. And Sorry, I'm I, laughing. I'm explaining emotions to my husband. <laughs> That's what I have to do because my husband's an Enneagram pie. I'm like, here's how it feels to have feelings, honey. <laughs> oh, I mean, I was like splitting hairs with my emotions where I was like, this frustrates me and I'm still very happy. And he just 
couldn't compute. He was just like, what do you mean? Because if this frustrates you, that means you're frustrated. When really it's like recognizing these different aspects and the multidimensional ways in which we feel things and understanding that it means nothing and still learning to trust myself because I made decisions based around this particular conversation from my gut. So it was like, yeah, you know, when you make these decisions or when you use your inner voice to make a decision and you know you're truly at peace with it, it doesn't always mean that the transition is easy. There will be aspects that will frustrate you and I'm still very at peace and happy with it because I know I made it for myself from myself and I can trust myself. And it was just such a mind-blowing conversation for him because he was just like, I've never... I, I'm just not that in touch with my emotions. I'm, I feel frustration, therefore I'm frustrated. Um, I feel sad, therefore I'm sad. When really these things can exist together. Ooh, girl, that is gold. That is so, I, I certainly couldn't have said it better. Um, that is so beautiful because yes, it is. you can know that you've made a decision that is best going to serve you and your path and you can still feel uncomfortable. You can still feel frustration, anger, sadness of letting go, right? I mean, letting go of something that you didn't want, but also knowing it's the best choice for your future joy. Of course you can have those together. Like you, I mean, Katie, um, if you want to share a little bit about your decision, she no longer lives in Colorado and she decided to move. And I got to witness her feeling both like happy knowing she would make the right choice and sad leaving what she loves. I feel like we've been dancing around this and it is like, this was one of the most transformative decisions that like truly, it didn't make sense to everyone. I just knew it made sense to me. Like people, so yeah, I moved from Colorado that became my people. This place became my community. I really, truly came into my own in a whole new level of, in way of being living in Colorado, because it was just a much more expansive environment where I was free to be who I wanted to be without any expectation or judgment from the the overall community, right? Kind of describes the community as like my crunchy woo-woo friends. And I had never had crunchy woo-woo friends before. So I was really expanding this other way of being when I lived there. And then I made this decision that like kind of abruptly, I need to go home. I need to move back to Alabama. I'm originally from South Florida, but my husband's from Alabama. And so is like my mom's whole family tree. So it was like, it's always been home away from home for me. Got married here. I went to college here. And there was just this really intense, very sudden, it's time to go home. And I waited an entire year to make it happen. And I kind of went back to some old patterns of like, well, let me weigh the pros and cons. Like what month should it be? When is the right time for me? Who am I going to hurt in this process? How can I make this easy for others in this process? Like all of this thought, right? But I just knew in my gut I had to go. And I didn't know why because it was it was just so sudden and I loved Loved, loved my life in Colorado so much. And then I remember being on a walk with Zach and we were walking our dog and we weighed the option of staying in Colorado. He he still works for the firm that he works for in Colorado. We had like this great setup and things were looking great. And, you know, if we just stayed a little bit longer, things would be even better. And we really considered for a moment... <laughs> should we stay? Or at least another year, right? And the moment that I put that into like my filter and I started filtering it through my mind and my gut, because I'd been working with Dana for a bit by this point where we had this conversation, I had this just immediate sinking feeling, a resounding no, don't stay. It is time to go. It just didn't sit well with me. It didn't, it didn't feel right. And then I thought about going home and what that would mean and, you know, being near family and, you know, the, on the, the pros on the list. And I immediately felt lighter. Granted, moving home to Colorado or moving home to Alabama was such an unknown still because I was a different person. I am a different person than when I left. 
And Alabama isn't necessarily any different than when I left either. So it's kind of the same, but I am different. Will I fit in? Will I lose a part of myself? Will I stop developing? There were a lot of scary what ifs um, that ended up being completely bogus. But you know, these are this is my ego trying to protect me and say no, stay in your safe zone. And we did it. We moved. And it was a messy move. And it was in the middle, it was right when the lockdowns were happening and we just had to get out. We just got home. It well, and, and but I'm gonna pause you for a second because after you made that decision, like truly decided, a bunch of things happened as well, which you don't have to describe, but just to share with everyone, like things were pushing her to leave, frankly. Oh, wow. Once they were, once they finally agreed, like, okay, we're going to leave. And really before you even agreed that, circumstances kept kind of slapping Katie in the face of like, get out, get out. You got to leave. You got to leave. And then the pandemic hit. (laughs) (laughs) And you're so, you're so right. Like I can't gloss over that. Like it was like slap in the face, slap in the face, go, 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 go. And I kept pushing the move date back. It was like, okay, you know, like, where we would love to go in January. January felt really right. Just up, oh, can't go in January. Maybe we'll look at the end of February. No, no, February doesn't feel right. And then March came. And we all know what happened in March. And it was like, okay, it's now or never. And you were going to stay till June at one point. Yes, we were going to stay till June. And that was like one of the worst feelings. And it was like, not because I didn't love Colorado or I didn't love the springtime in Colorado. Like it's one of my favorite times, in fact. It was just like something was like, no, don't do it. So it would hit me in the face. It quite literally slapped me in the face with a circumstance or an altercation or a roadblock or a challenge that was just like, okay, universe. It was like this alignment of my subconscious and the universe. Like they were definitely holding hands saying, come with me, follow us, do this. And my ego was like, yeah, but moving is just a pain. So I'm just going to stay where I am. I'm going to stay in this circumstance because I technically have longer when it was an undeniable force out of Colorado. And it started, yeah, and just like trusting my gut and knowing and recognizing and seeing these things line up. Because the more I trusted my gut, the more I was able to recognize these signs and recognize these challenges and recognize the universe trying to speak to me. It was really... It was so wild because, and then the pandemic hit and my husband and I got home and full disclosure, we moved home because we wanted to buy a house and we ended up buying a house in January and we wanted to start a family and we're like, okay, well we can have this house. We can renovate it and make it what we want. We ended up finding our absolute dream home, like a true manifestation. Like if anyone's ever like, have you ever manifested anything? I'm like this house definitely this house down to the color on the walls. And we want to start a family and we'll wait until like December because then we have time to renovate and then we'll feel ready. Right. And the house, by the way, you bought sight unseen (laughs) unseen. because you knew. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're right. Because I saw pictures online and in my gut, I was like, this is the one. And they wouldn't even let anyone look at it because they had some kind of uh, like, I think it was like a leak or something. And so they were like doing some like minor renovations to it to fix the damage. And I just put it in an offer blind. I was just like, this is it. This is the one we're putting in an offer. And my realtor thought I was absolutely nuts. Just thought I was crazy. And so the first time I saw it was actually, I think two weeks later, I flew down here for the holidays. And um, it was, we were doing our inspection and um, I, we walk in for the very first time and I see my dream floors. I see my dream color walls, the layout. It was better than I imagined. Cause you know, there's only so much you can tell from pictures online. And my realtor looked at me and he's like, you know, I've never had anyone do that. It's highly unusual. Good call. <laughs> Good call. And since then, there hasn't been a house that's popped up that I've loved more or felt better about or that has been a combination of all the things we needed. It just truly, it was a true manifestation of what I wanted and what we needed and trusting my gut when I saw it and taking action. 
it was really, really an insane experience and opened my eyes once again to like what was possible when I trusted myself and I like leaned into manifestation and this like budding intuition that came with trusting my gut. And so the big um, climax of this story is that my husband and I moved home in March with these dreams of renovating this house and having a baby in December. And two weeks after we move home, we actually find out that we're already pregnant. And it just all came full circle for me. This extreme rush and need and push to get home. Because I could not imagine going through my first trimester in the situation that I was currently in. It's for anyone who is a mama, for all the mamas out there, we all know that the first trimester is really, really hard. And for me, at least, I won't, I guess, I won't push my experience onto you, but it can be very hard. I was just so tired. I could barely lift a pinky. I had no motivation. I thought I had mono before I found out I was pregnant. And it was just this like moment of everything coming together and making complete sense, even though I couldn't make sense of it before this happened. It was like the universe and my gut were telling me it is time to go home. There are all of these things that are going to happen in the world you know, the pandemic and the unrest and everything that could have prevented me from coming home in June. Really, you need to get home. You need to be with your family during this time. And I truly, again, I could not imagine going through that those first 12 weeks, not being with my family, being stuck in the situation that I was in and not having the support of the people who truly loved me and supported the decisions that I was making. It was just like, my mind was so blown and I was immediately just filled with peace, knowing that because I was able to suspend my disbelief and learn to trust my gut, I was able to create this reality where I was in the most loving and supportive and cushy experience for one of the most like biggest upheavals and just biggest life changes I'll probably ever experience becoming a first time mom and during a pandemic. It was just incredible. It was just incredible to see the true fruits of cultivating this side of myself. Mm. I am getting like smacked with chills and tears as you're describing that (laughs) because I feel it so deeply for you and just even flashing back to like, really the last six months or the first six months, four months of the year were really this big, massive, full body, spirit, mind, relationship healing for you. And we get to look back. I've like, I seriously am going to cry right now. We get to look back at that and be like, all of this was preparing you for the baby (laughs) and to create life. And I mean, you can't, you can't plan this shit. Like you, we plan stuff like this all the time, but you can't, the magic of tuning in, of following the nudges, of being guided and trusting that there's something bigger that you're moving toward is just so much more profound and powerful and impactful than living in the small box of mind based life and lists and pros and cons and expectations because you've had really the most beautiful, you know, certainly has not been without its challenges, but this, this year has just been this massive transformation and it's all led you to where you are. And Uh, it had to be that way. Oh my gosh. It really, really did. And you're right. Like we get to look back on it and say, oh, so this is what was happening. And at the time, it's not always that cut and dry. It's not always that crystal clear. No, <laughs> no. Just- That's where the trust comes in. <laughs> That's where the trust comes in, but it always comes full circle. And just like, like a result of that is me leaning into it even more. 
Like when it was, it was just so obvious that this is what was happening. When it, when it finally all came full circle, I was like, oh, okay. Okay. This, I can truly say, not just like, okay, I get it, but I get it. I get it now. Like I truly trust this process and trust myself because not only am I doing it, I'm experiencing it, but it's in front of me. It's happening. It's unfolding right now. And it's made me more aware of these like everyday ways that I'm trusting my gut and how that's expanding me into like, we talked about love languages earlier and how that's expanding me into new forms of an inner voice, how you can have more than one. And when you learn to trust them, they show up for you. If you show up for them, they show up for you. Yeah, if you're willing to listen, you'll you'll receive what you're what you're wanting to listen for. And that it's funny because what I teach in the membership is to the trust is a really big thing. I mean, when I like talk to my audience and people that I work with, it's concerning <laughs> frankly of this lack of trust in self and even uh, you don't even trust that you can trust yourself like that that's even possible. And it's alarming and it saddens me because we're so powerful. We're so wise. We have so much inner knowing as one of my inner voices that I've worked with has, they, they were very specific. They said knowing with a capital K. Okay. So that's the knowing from within versus the lowercase K is knowing from the mind, which is like you said, right? I get it versus I get it. (laughs) And this trust. So I usually, what I teach is in the membership, we have all these different practices and exercises to start small, okay? (laughs) And then you build up that trust. Well, Katie went big, okay, guys? Katie started with the massive life transformations and found that trust, and now she's working it into her everyday life. (laughs) It was was kind of one of those, like, you know, like, it started with a small nudge saying, okay, I'm going to trust this. I'm going to trust that. Okay, I'm going to move states, and I'm going to have a baby. (laughs) You're in a house blind. (laughs) I tell you what, like it's, it can feel inspiring and it can feel like opening up all these possibilities. And at the time people thought I was nuts, Mm -hmm. had absolutely no idea why I was making these decisions. Couldn't really understand, thought maybe I was forcing it. Was I really considering all of my options? All of this external feedback that like, if I had actually gone back to my old patterns and taken that external feedback and then put it into a spreadsheet and weighed the pros and cons and ignored my gut, I would have been in a really bad situation. I would have been in a situation that was not right for me. And it would have made the experience of bringing a new life into this world with my husband that we are so thrilled about that much more stressful in the middle of a move, in the middle of a pandemic, in a living in a toxic environment that would when all I could do was sleep and basically drool on myself for the first 12 weeks would have been even more stressful and hard. And I'm so grateful to know that like, even when it didn't make sense to others, I knew that it made sense to me and that was all that I needed. Yes. And that my friends is the power. That is why we talk about tuning down the noise, both the noise of like the mind and all that chatter and the external noise of other people because other people are only sharing what they know through their limited perspective, through their lens. Mm -hmm. They can't actually know. They can share and share their, their experience, but ultimately that's the turning down the noise and turning up your inner voice because that's the one that's really looking out for you, right? It's truly knowing what's best for you, even if in the moment you don't know why or how. That's where the trust comes in because if we knew the why and the how, we'd already be doing it. So the trust is, I don't know why, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I trust that I'm being guided. I know with a capital K that my voice is guiding me to make decisions that are going to serve me. And I also know with a capital K that when I look back, I will see how it all came together. Yes. And it's so, and it also can be, you know, these, these deep levels of transformation guys, and it can also just be really fun to connect with your inner voice and make fun decisions. Like what kind of coffee, Dan, I know like you're like, what kind of coffee am I going to make this morning? Right. 
It's like there's all these little decisions that can make your life and your everyday experience so much more fun when you're making them from your inner voice. And it will surprise you too. Sometimes it will surprise you. And speaking of coffee, I had this really wild like expansion of my inner voice the other day. I told Dana about this. I was like, this is insane. And this is because I am opening myself to this practice. But it's like little things. Like I picked out a coffee mug and I was going to pour some coffee for my husband. And something told me, like the literal booming voice of God that I thought I was supposed to experience the first time that said, but I don't want this one to break. And there was no reason for me to believe that it was going to break. It was just like this gut feeling that immediately turned to a voice that said, put it back. And I did. And I picked a different mug that was replaceable. And I gave it to my husband. And the next morning, it broke. (laughs) And I was just like, oh my goodness, that's insane. I had no idea that connecting with my inner voice could lead to these fun little, what I would have considered coincidences. But really, it was like an a fissure in the universe that I got a glimpse inside because I trusted my subconscious and inner voice, which is what connects you to the universe. And it was just like, wow, if I can predict a coffee mug breaking, what else can I do? What other decisions can I make that will bring me happiness in the future? It's really just, it isn't always a hard decision. Sometimes it's a fun decision. And then those fun decisions help you when you make those hard decisions. Exactly. And, you know, the fun decisions, like living with this in everyday life, it's fun. I mean, you can use it to pick out the clothes that you wear. You won't always know, right? Here's the deal. You won't always know what the, since we aren't actively, at least to our knowledge, living in parallel universes, like I can't jump from one parallel to the next. So I can't always know that, for example, if I choose the white shoes instead of the red shoes, that I will end up spilling um, something on my right white shoes that will stain. And if I was wearing red shoes, it wouldn't stain, right? We can't always know that. But we had a fun, we were on a hike this weekend and I was leading the way. And typical Dana, I joke that my inner guidance system is always right. But my inner GPS, <laughs> the more <laughs> specific one, is always wrong, aka I'm horrible with directions. <laughs> So somehow I got, I was uh, leading us home from our hike and this was with my family and my husband, John, and my brother and his girlfriend. And I, we missed a turn and I'm like, no, this feels right. This feels right. This feels right. Well, guess what freaking happened where I was guided because I was like, I, this is right. We ran, almost literally ran into an elk mama and her baby. (laughs) And it was so cool. And also, if I was like, followed my mind and said, no, turn around, we wouldn't have seen her. And I had said just earlier that day, I said, I want to see, oh, not an elk. I'm sorry, a moose, guys, a moose and a baby moose and a mama moose. I had said that morning, I want to see a moose on this trip. We were in Grand Lake. And guess what? I was brought to see the freaking moose that I asked for. It's insane. You know, and I was following eight, one of my guidance systems. It wasn't the directionally challenged one. Um, it was the one that was taking us to see the moose that I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's like little things like that. This is why it's so much more fun to have fun with life because then it started to rain. And as we were walking that way, we realized we were going the wrong direction. It started to rain. And it's like if we had gotten mad and frustrated and like, oh, what are we doing wrong? We have to turn around. Instead of continually going, we would have been in an energetic mismatch, right? To see the beautiful moose and the little baby. And when we're riding the wave of life a little bit more and following that guidance and having fun, fun. It's okay if you make a wrong turn, guys. It's okay. If if you're following this guidance along the way, you can find more joy and peace and fun moments that make the whole journey more enjoyable. Cuz as we know, right? It's not it's not just about Katie moving back to Alabama and having her baby on her timeline. It's about her having this trust in herself and following the journey and enjoying the whole part of it, not just the result. 
And that's what following that guidance allows you to do because it's like you're playing a game. You're like, oh, should I do this or should I do this? And then you get to play with the nudge based on your inner voice type that you're guided to do. And then you get to see what the outcome is. And with the small decisions, it's really fun. It's like, well, because often like I'll, it'll be weird stuff. Like I'll leave my um, AirPod out of the um, case and then I'll be leaving the room and then I'll just hear this nudge, like put it back. And I'm like, and that's an easy enough thing to ignore, right? And like, eh, I'll put it back. But now I'm at the place where I trust it. Or like, I'm going to bed and I just want to go to bed. And then I hear, hear the noise like, you know, um, do an energy clearing or do a meditation. And I'm like, I don't feel like it. Or floss your teeth. That happened last night. I just wanted to go to bed. And then I was like, it was like, floss your teeth. I'm like, man. But now I just listen because I'm like, I, I trust that there's a reason for this, these stupid nudges. <laughs> They're not stupid, but you know, it's just like, I hear them now and I'm like way more willing to listen. Yeah. And it's, it's once again, it's that internal map that is inside ourselves, you know, to go off this analogy of being on a hike and you taking a wrong turn. Um, there's just an internal map inside us that there are destinations and sites and experiences that are off the grid that only our internal map can guide us to. That might be our audio clip for uh, this episode. (laughs) Wisdom from Katie. That's why you're the most amazing. (laughs) And guess what? That was at 10101. Oh my Um, God. Alignment. Sorry, guys. I can't resist it. Katie, you're amazing. Do you have anything else that you want to share about anything that, I mean, you've you've dropped so many wisdom nuggets and you've just shared so openly and transparently, that's a word, about your journey and using this. And I just so appreciate you being so candid with us about all of this because I think that's what people need to hear. Like, your experience is not my experience. And yet, you know, as we both continue down this journey, we get to share how we're using this, this tool, you know, this powerhouse wisdom within ourselves to, you know, change the trajectory of your life. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And I, I'm just grateful to be able to share this experience and to be a part of this community and to have met you, Dana, that ultimately is what led me to be able to have these experiences. There are people that you meet that transform your life in a way that you just can't predict. And so I want to express my gratitude, one, for you coming into my life and two, for opening me to this on such a deep level. And if there's anyone out there who's listening to this because they want to get to know their inner voice more and they're curious about the tuning in membership, I encourage you to listen to that nudge and to trust that nudge and to trust what we now know after this episode is your inner voice and to allow it into your life. That if there is a part of you that is here because you are interested in this, that is because your inner voice is quite literally screaming at you to say, please hear me. Please listen to me. Here's a podcast episode about me. Maybe after this, you will finally know me. That's so beautiful, Katie. Katie's inner voice is also the one I think I've shared before, everyone, but her inner voice when we did our deep session, it's so wise, right? It's talking to us, talking to us. Her inner voice said she'll be wildly successful when she listens to her inner voice. And I said, inner voice, what does that mean for Katie? He said, dancing in the kitchen. (laughs) And you know what's so crazy about that is for years, my husband knows I am happiest when I am making up random songs to our dog and I am dancing. So it was this like, it just came up out of nowhere. This like, I will be wildly successful. And what that will look like is me dancing and singing in the kitchen. In your gorgeous new kitchen. It's really pretty. I have so kitchen it's envy, guys. <laughs> I'm like, can I come visit you in your gorgeous house and like maybe live there one month a year because it's so pretty. Your manifested inner voice house. We do have a guest wing at this point because we only are using like 
two out of our four bedrooms at this point. We're going to get to grow a family in here. And that includes you in here. (laughs) But yeah, it was just, I remember that moment. And when it came out going, wow, you know, like, cause success is something different for everyone. And for me, that's the ultimate manifestation of happiness. Knowing I am truly happy because I'm making up some ridiculous song to my dog and I'm dancing in the kitchen. I I never made the connection that like, yeah, success was happiness to me. And that's going to look, and I'm going to accomplish that. And probably what I now know is a very different way than what most people might. And just trusting that and that my voice knows that. And therefore the universe yeah. knows that. Exactly. And that's why it's so powerful. Like Katie said, is if you're feeling the nudge, like don't write it off. I mean, that is what we're here to do is being able to tap into that and get that new perspective and really step into being that version of yourself, being, living, operating from that inner guidance, the inner voice within you that is you not just the mind. It's just another part of you. It's just another station that we get to tune to. And how freeing and delightful for Katie to experience that something her mind has been so attached to, success, wildly successful, can mean something so different. And she aligned with the message, right? It's not like it's telling our success is to go live in a cave. Um, (laughs) You know, your inner voice will talk to you and it will share that with you, which is why you have to be able to tap in so that you can learn that different perspective you can learn what it means for you and only for you you know you're it's your your life people it's your show and let your inner voice guide you to the success that is for you and what's even crazier is that you just kind of jogged my memories it's like I used to believe that for me success meant lots of money right and so I joined the tuning in podcast when I did not have lots of money like it was definitely something that I was like, oh man, you know, like I'm going to have to put this on the credit card. I'm going to have to try to hide it from Zach or explain it away to Zach. But by joining, I actually did reach the level of success that I was looking for. And it wasn't monetary value. It was the happiness and dancing in my brand new, beautiful kitchen. Success. Because I trusted, it gave me the success I needed, which was to listen and align with what was meant for me. And then I finally understood that I was successful and the peace that comes with that is priceless. Yeah. More tears, more chills. <laughs> and I think with that, Katie has dropped her final wisdom bomb. You are so amazing. Um, thank you for sharing your wisdom, your beautiful journey, your continued thriving. To have you here today and to have you as a friend and a coach and a confidant and a messaging guru and every piece of you is something I hold very dearly. So thank you, Katie. Thank you, Dana. You're bringing me to tears because I could repeat all of those things right back at you. I am just grateful to be here and grateful to share and grateful for the people that you're going to impact and the lives that are going to change as a result of you being you. Thank you so much. I well, just thank love you, you guys. If you want to um, talk to Katie, we'll put her in the show notes. She's not very active on Instagram, so I'll tag her. But right we'll- now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's incubating. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm molting into my final form as a human vending machine. That's exactly. what I've been telling myself. <laughs> exactly. But I'll put her Instagram and website on uh, the at Katie Carter Huey. I believe that that's correct? it. No, K, K Carter Huey at K Carter C A R T E R Huey H U E Y in the show notes. On the gram, you can find her there. You can tag her and share your favorite takeaway from her share with this episode. Thank you, everybody. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you um, haven't joined the challenge yet, it's alignful.com forward slash challenge. 
and you will be getting an invite soon to join the Tuning In membership if you feel called to do so. See you next week. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. As always, if this would resonate with anyone you know, please share the episode. You can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans, or find me on my website at alignful.com.